Oh, fancy agent man. What's cooking, agent guy? Robbie, I've got bad news. All right, lay it on me. The porch, uh, they canceled. Dude, we're supposed to be filming this week. I'm sorry, but they canceled. So just find me another porch. We tried. Uh, no other porch will have you. You're telling me you can't find a single porch in all of Colorado? No. But we did find you a garage. A garage? I don't know. Is it at least nice? Yes. What was the, the word they used? Uh, uh, majestic. Majestic. Robbie, you're going to love it. It's got, it's got concrete floors. It's got uh, uh, two walls. It's got uh, cabinets. It's got cabinets. It's like, you know, Robbie, I can see you being a garage guy. Now, picture this, okay? Robbie, the fire, 2025, the garage tour. I don't know, is that really all you can get? Yes. Does it at least have a green room? Oh, it's got a fantastic green room. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the best green room. Oh, it's the best green room. I got a show. There you go. Put your hands together for Robbie the Fire Bernstein. 13 years in comedy, and I finally sold out the Denver Comedy Garage. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we got this election coming up, and uh, here's the biggest change I'd like to see in the world is. Uh, I'd really like to see them make like a new neo-Nazi movie where the main character didn't look like me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm Jewish, it doesn't even make sense, okay? <laughs> Why does it look like I'm leading your cause? I don't like that. <laughs> and then Hitler, his favorite thing was hair, hair, right? Hitler fought a war on two fronts. You get people with long, luscious blonde hair, and then you get these neo-Nazis who are just shaving it off, and it's like, what are you guys doing? You should be growing it out. You should be making the Fuhrer proud. You guys are getting a little bit weird on me. <laughs> I didn't bring you guys here to tell you how Nazis could be better Nazis. <laughs> but I do feel like if they're not even getting the look right, it's like, no wonder you're being controlled by Jews. <laughs> you guys can't even get the basics down. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed that they recall Joe Biden. You guys also? I just, I had a lot invested in that dementia storyline, okay? <laughs> I was hoping for a more spectacular ending than him on a debate stage going, huh? <laughs> huh? Like, I wanted to see him fall down a flight of stairs like a human slinky. That's... <laughs> I wanted to see him forget he was on TV, just look at a camera and go... I gotta get back to Epstein's Island, man. <laughs> and uh, I know that we could have gotten more out of Joe Biden because in my family, we got a long history of dementia and we have a perfect system for knowing when you have to recall somebody and it's uh, when you see their balls. <laughs> we actually call it being Uncle Phil. Do we have a term for it? <laughs> He was my great uncle. He was the first one that did it to me. And then one time I was visiting my grandfather. My grandfather was wearing a robe and he Sharon Stone me. <laughs> did one of those. I gazed right at my grandfather's hairy nuts. <laughs> I had to call up my dad and be like, it's time. I was Uncle Phil. <laughs> uh, now that they were called Joe Biden, what do you guys think they're doing with all the uh, Joe Biden clones? <laughs> You think they uh, send them to a farm to run around with the other Bidens? <laughs> or do you think they were killing them off after every speech, like in The Prestige? <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to miss the Bidens. Here was my favorite incident with the Bidens. There was that time when uh, Hunter Biden was at the White House and he was doing cocaine. You guys remember that one? And uh, I don't know about you guys, I don't really like cocaine unless someone here brought some. <laughs> we could just do that, it's my show. Uh, 
But people got really pissed off because Joe, he wrote the crime bill. And then you get Hunter. He's at the White House. He's doing cocaine. And people are like, this is a double standard. And uh, I agree. How are the elites still getting clean cocaine? <laughs> right? We got to deal with fentanyl and they still have clean cocaine? Like, the only way that you can do cocaine these days is if uh, you're out on a date and you go, ladies first. <laughs> That's the only way you can do that drug. <laughs> they look up at you like, hey, you want some? You're like, in 10 minutes. Uh, you get a head start, hon. I'll catch up. <laughs> they went with uh, Kamala Harris, though. That's a nice uh, consolation prize, you know? Like, uh, I feel like they picked the one person in the country with a more grating voice than RFK Jr. <laughs> It's a shame that he failed because, you know, he had a solution to the uh, food inflation problem, which is eating roadkill. <laughs> you got to eat roadkill. <laughs> it's non-GMO. <laughs> it's how you get abs like Iggy Pop. <laughs> But uh, Kamala Harris, she's working on it. I see her at these big rallies now, and she's up there going, uh -huh. <laughs> just running the I ain't your baby daddy campaign. <laughs> Which I guess is better than when she used to be going, war is like when a mommy country and a daddy country. <laughs> don't get along, and that's why we have to give bombs to the daddy country to drop. <laughs> on the mommy country. <laughs> and at first, that's what made Kamala Harris fun, was that at any point in time, she could say something so stupid that the earth actually stops spinning on its axis, and your dog just looks at you and goes, what the fuck did she just say? <laughs> but then I watched her when she was on The View. I watched her when she did Howard Stern. I watched her when she did 60 Minutes. And that's when I realized, we have to get the women out of politics. <laughs> Thank you. Because I'm watching this lady talk about empathy and cooking pancakes, and you're ruining my favorite TV show, okay? I'd rather have Dick Cheney bomb shit. I don't. And then they rolled out Tim Walls to back her up. He's kind of fun. I kind of like him. He rolled up at the DNC. He's got that Minnesota Chris Farley energy. You know, he's out there just <laughs> He's out there, I'm a knucklehead, knucklehead. <laughs> Said I was in a war, I wasn't in. Knucklehead, knucklehead. <laughs> Touched a couple kids on the football team, knucklehead. <laughs> And then, uh, I mean, this was crazy. They were selling us on the coach thing, right? They got really excited. Coach, coach, coach. Like, as if that's what qualifies you for being vice president. But then it turns out he wasn't even a coach. He was the assistant coach for a high school football team. Okay, that's like if I was opening up a restaurant. I was like, guys, you wouldn't believe it. I got the line chef from Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Donald Trump, he had a weird year. He had five court cases. Biggest one was the January 6th one. They were all mad. They said that he lied about winning the election. And it's like, yeah, he's a politician. They lied. That's the job. We're going to get mad at him for that? Like, listen, I don't even fault people. If you're going to vote, it's always for a liar. But if you think about it, when you're lied to it, it kind of feels nice. Here's an example. Every once in a while, I'll eat a fat-free, dairy-free, sugar-free muffin. And uh, you know what the ingredients in that is? Cancer. <laughs> I'll just be in my house making out with cancer for breakfast, and I'm like, oh, I'm a good person, because they lied to me, right? And then, also, here's the thing. They had to prove that Donald Trump didn't believe he won the election, and how do you prove what Donald Trump does or doesn't believe? Like, he's a sales guy manifester, right? Like, Donald Trump's such a good manifester. I'm convinced if we went to his house, he's probably got a vision board from when he was 13 years old where he just hand-painted Melania. <laughs> He was there as a fat 13-year-old just going, I'm going to have the hottest wife. <laughs> and then he made this motion three times, and she just spontaneously appeared in some Eastern European country. We're probably funding to lose a war to Russia, too. <laughs> 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 
Now, uh, we do have a lot of turmoil going on in the world. And uh, at this point, you know, I kind of feel like maybe we're not going to end all wars, but uh, maybe we could at least keep them all in the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> You know where God wants them. <laughs> like, I almost feel like if China's going to take Taiwan, they should go to Gaza to do so. <laughs> Everything I hear from stronger conservatives are always like, we got to be out in the world, we have to have a strong military, we got to be fucking people up, and then people will fear us and we'll have peace on Earth. But like, I see what we're doing. We're always bombing civilians. We're always sanctioning people. It affects civilians. Like, I think if we want people to fear us, here's what I think we should do. I think we should go invade Canada. <laughs> and now, listen, I don't want to keep Canada. Canada sucks. I want to make that clear, okay? <laughs> That's not my plan. But we're going to go invade Canada. We let everyone know no one's off limits, okay? We go, we take Canada, we give it back, but we take Trudeau. That's my plan, okay? <laughs> We take Trudeau and we make him the waiter of the White House, okay? <laughs> and we have him do it in blackface. <laughs> On his breaks, we have him watch footage of his mom hanging out with Fidel Castro. <laughs> and that's how you get Mexico to pay for the wall. That's how you do it. They also, uh, they tried killing Donald Trump. That was pretty crazy. We all saw that. He dodged a bullet on live television. And uh, people got really excited about it. They were like, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Like, even Donald Trump was saying it's a miracle. And uh, here's the thing. I don't want to, like, speak for God, but I feel like if God was performing a miracle, he probably wouldn't kill a firefighter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, we're describing an infinite power here, okay? You know, it would have been a miracle if God turned that bullet into a cheeseburger. That would have been a miracle. <laughs> if Donald Trump was giving that speech right when he was doing one of these, it whizzed past his head. He just grabbed it thin out of the air, took a bite, and just went, not enough mayonnaise. <laughs> That cheeseburger is drier than Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> that would have been a miracle. <laughs> you know what else would have been a miracle? If uh, when one of those little old ladies was standing there and going, hey, there's a shooter on the roof, if they did something. That... <laughs> that also would have been a miracle. <laughs> I do feel like Donald Trump's kind of like lost a step since they've shot at him. He like seems to be a little bit more like tempered. Like I was watching the debates and you know, the old Donald Trump, he would have been up there just going, that lady's so Indian. <laughs> she was in Ohio putting curry on the cats. <laughs> Here was the, uh, this was the craziest news story I read all year. I was reading about this uh, Harvard professor Guy was running an experiment to see if there was a correlation between dick size and self-esteem. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That's the right response. Exactly. I was like, we have Harvard working on this one? I'm dumb and I can handle this one. The answer is yes. It's yes. That's it. If I had a big one, I could get fired from a job. I'd be like, yeah, I got a big dick. I don't need this shit. Or a doctor could tell me I had cancer, I'd be like, not with a cock like this, I don't. <laughs> Have you seen this thing? I've been chosen from God for greatness. That's... <laughs> I did recently, uh, I got myself health insurance, and uh, for the first time in my adult life, I went to see a doctor. Guy took some blood work and told me that I have to uh, stop drinking, and I was like, this insurance sucks. <laughs> And then the guy gave me this whole speech. He's like, we used to drink for a lifetime. He's like, it didn't matter. No one's liver gave out. He's like, the issue now is like, we're living to 87, 88 years old. And he's like, people, they're starting to get dementia. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I'd ever want to be 88 years old without dementia. Like, 
that is no way to be an old person, okay? Have you been around old people? I try and visit my grandmother. She is still sharp, and uh, she's kind of a bummer, okay? I'll say it. It's like a polstering doll of complaint. She's like, my back hurts. I'm going to die. That's all she says. <laughs> Whereas my grandfather's got dementia, and he's like, we've got pudding here? <laughs> Like, it doesn't matter how full that guy's diaper is, he's got a smile on his face, okay? <laughs> that guy's having a good time. And then uh, I realized this when I visit my grandfather. You know what he's doing? He's watching Turner Classic Movie on repeat. He's sitting in a chair. He's having a good time. He's eating soup. And that's when I realized, if anything, it's more like you drink for a lifetime. And then God's gift to you is that you get dementia, which is just blacking out for free. <laughs> <laughs> It's God going, you know what? Drinks are on the house. You earned it. <laughs> I, did, uh, I did recently have to visit my, uh, my grandfather at the hospital. He, uh, he actually, he got his uh, asshole removed. Um, yeah, he's going with uh, more of an open floor plan now. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to get some uh, light and air in there. It's uh, <laughs> better for the property values. <laughs> No, he, uh, he got ass cancer, and uh, that's a bummer. You know, I don't want to tell you guys about ass cancer. I want to share a positive message with everyone in this room, which is uh, you've got to play with your butthole while you still have it. <laughs> right? You don't even get, get to an age, and they're just taking it from you. That's not cool. You're like, I never had this thing tickled. <laughs> I never had this thing licked. <laughs> you guys are getting a little, little bit weird on me again. <laughs> And uh, I want to let you know, that's actually what my grandfather said to me at the hospital. <laughs> he was like, you play obscure locations, you share this message with the world. <laughs> I, uh, I did recently, I had to, so I had to visit my grandfather at the hospital, and uh, um, when I was there, I noticed some crazy things. Like, for one, you know, they're always telling us, like, we got to, like, eat healthy. And you go to the hospital, they got, like, nothing but jello, Okay. Like, what am I doing with salads if Jell-O's good for you, okay? Or in this case, my grandfather woke up hungry from ass cancer surgery, and you guys would never believe what the doctor left out for him. Cheesecake. Yeah, doctor was like, you know what? Let's take this colostomy bag for a spin. <laughs> it's like, let's show the world what living without an asshole is all about. <laughs> It's not even the craziest thing I, uh, I witnessed at the hospital. My grandfather was at Sloan Kettering. That's New York City's hospital for cancer like treatment, right? And even in that case, they had my grandfather in a shared room. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever had to visit someone in a shared room, but it's very uncomfortable. And it doesn't even make sense because the curtain, it takes up more space than a wall, <laughs> but you still hear everything that's on the other side. Right? And so in this case, on the other side of this wall, there's this lady from Long Island. And for three hours, I'm listening to this lady, and she's going, so when we leave, you're going to put your pants on, right? <laughs> you're going to put your pants on, right? <laughs> and I got to tell you guys, I'm not a doctor, but that lady's voice caused that man's cancer. <laughs> I'm in a weird place in my life, though, because, uh, you know, I don't trust the healthcare system anymore. And uh, it was the COVID thing. It was, you know. And uh, at this point, like, you know, I'm not, like, really rooting for vaccine injuries. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want more credit for being right. I just... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm petty and I need a couple dicks to start falling off, okay? I was I was talking some real shit and everyone's just moved on. I don't like that. <laughs> and even worse than that is I still see Fauci on the news. They still pull Fauci out like a health expert. And uh, even like shutting down the country, they shut down the country over the six feet rule. And you guys know what he has to say about it now? He's just on the news going, well, it just kind of sort of appeared. That's what he says about shutting down the country. It just kind of sort of appeared. And just kind of sort of appeared is not a national health policy. That's the way you describe having an STD. <laughs> it just kind of sort of appeared. <laughs> 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 
And now sometimes I'll be reading things in the news and I just know it's not true. Like sometimes I just know, like for example, I was reading this article recently that they got this chemical that they can give to men so that men can breastfeed. And they are so trying to normalize men breastfeeding, they're actually calling it chest feeding, okay? (laughs) And in this article that I was reading about the men chest feeding, they were saying that the trans breast milk is just as good as regular breast milk. Yeah, do any of you guys believe that to be true? No. Like, listen, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but I'm telling you, if you gave that to a little kid, you know what their first words would be? Stop. (laughs) And so I'm reading this article where they're talking about how it's just as good, and I got lucky because, uh, I got this uh, gay friend, you're allowed to have those in New York, and uh, (laughs) my gay friend, he's got a fetish for breast milk, and everyone take a second with that. You gotta do a little math in your head, okay? That's very weird. Gay guy loves breast milk. Everyone got that in their heads? That's weird, right? So you would think if there was a chemical that you could give to men so that men could breastfeed, that would be my friend's favorite thing, right? We're talking about two things that don't exist in nature that now scientists have miraculously brought together, okay? (laughs) Like, that would be on the level if there was, like, a chemical that you could give to women that when I was having sex with them, gold coins fell out of their asshole. (laughs) It just sounded like a slot machine. That's what we're describing here, right? (laughs) So I asked my friend J.J. Lieberman about this, and here's what he had to say. He said, uh, regular breast milk is a little bit like if you're ever eating like a bowl of Frosted Flakes, and then you drink the milk afterwards, there's like a sweetness to it. That's what he said regular breast milk's like. Whereas he said the trans breast milk is more like pus from an open wound. <laughs> And yet somehow I can read a newspaper article that says just as good, right? (laughs) And then talking about this world we live in now where we're just ignoring science, now we've got men that can transition and even play in women's sports. And uh, I have a different opinion than probably everyone in this room. I think it's fine, but like, you gotta give up your dick. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? If you're gonna make that sacrifice, then fine. You can go beat up women. Like, you did it, okay? And listen, I'm not even being bigoted. I think we could do something nicer. Like after you cut it off, you can take it. We'll do some sort of like a ceremony where you throw it into a fire or something. (laughs) You would offer it to your God and then you could take the ashes and you could do that thing LeBron does before a game. (laughs) (laughs) You could take your penis ashes and just sprinkle them in the air. And if I watch someone sprinkle their penis ashes in the air, I'm like, yeah, you can go swim with the other women. You earned it. (laughs) (laughs) And that was the first one. It was that Leah Thomas swimmer lady got in the pool with that other woman. And, uh, you know, I kind of felt like it was a missed opportunity because I was like, this would have been a lot more fun if she had the world's biggest hog. Like, if she was past the other swimmers and it was just floating behind her, <laughs> it just looked like a propeller in the water. <laughs> or if it was so long, it just actually floated up at the surface like a fin. <laughs> She's past the other swimmers, they're just playing the Jaws music, like, dan and dan and <laughs> Or if it looked like a periscope on a submarine. And people are like, she's cheating. She's breathing out of her dick. (laughs) Now, I gotta be honest. I feel like we're weirded out by this because it's a new technology. That's my theory. Like, everyone's nervous about AI because it's new. When things are new, it's weird. But, like, I almost imagine if we lived in the future and there was a box and you could just go into this box and go become the other gender and then go back into the box and go back to being your gender. Any of you guys think you might give it a whirl? No? Yeah. Yeah? There you go. One fucking party guy up front. There you go. (laughs) Hell yeah, me and you, man. I I would do it every Tuesday. That's what I would do, okay? (laughs) I'd go into that box. I'd become a lady. I'd go to New York City. I'd go to some lesbian bar. I'd roll up in my 2012 Subaru Legacy. I'd be some hot shit, okay? (laughs) 
look at me. I already got Butch body. I'm ready to go, all right? <laughs> Roll up Super Legacy in some flannel. I'd pick up some chick. I'd go back to her place, and I would do all the lesbian classics. All of them. Double-headed dildos, 69, symbians. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and this is my first time with the vagina, so, you know, I'd have like six, seven orgasms. She'd have none, because I don't know what I'm doing. I just... <laughs> I'm not good at that. <laughs> but after having all those orgasms, you know, I would cry. I would cuddle in her arms. It would be beautiful. Until the next morning, when I found out that was a dude that also went through the box, but... <laughs> it's just me and this guy having an awkward breakfast. You're both like, don't tell this to anybody. <laughs> but also, what are your plans next Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> now, when it comes to adults, I'm of the opinion of, uh, who gives a shit? It's a free country. Go ahead. You do you. I don't care. But uh, I think at least here, we can all agree that it's weird that they're bringing it to kids, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, I looked into this. Apparently, 85% of kids, if you leave them alone, they'll just grow out of it. And I'm not that smart, but I figured out what it is. Like, I 100% figured out what it is. It's because these kids are, like, five and six years old. It's not till age 13 that you start jerking off. And that's when you learn, oh, this thing's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's just built on and it cures depression? Like... <laughs> Someone should have told me that's a winning lottery ticket. <laughs> so because of all this, I'm checked out. I don't trust the healthcare system anymore, and uh, I don't know what you guys do, like, if you have a healthcare problem, but uh, here's my new thing. If I'm having, like, a healthcare issue, what I do now is I'll just go to a Whole Foods, and uh, I'll find a guy with a nice body, and I just copy what that guy's doing. <laughs> I'll follow him down the aisleways. I see him put some kale in his cart. I'm like, all right, leafy greens. I heard about those. <laughs> I see him put some oranges in. I'm like, all right, citrus, I've heard about that. <laughs> at some point, this always happens. He looks up at me. He's like, hey, man, are you copying me? I'm like, well, are you bleeding out of your asshole? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, well, then help me out, sir. Uh, <laughs> frankly, you're being a little bit selfish here. <laughs> So here's what's going on. I was drinking way too much coffee. I'm like an ADD maniac. I got to a point I was drinking like uh, 10 cups of coffee a day. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever gotten into that level of coffee consumption, but I would basically describe it as a lifestyle of anxiety and diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the anxiety is about the diarrhea. So <laughs> it's a little bit circular, you know? And so I was like, I got to get out of this circle. So the first thing I did, I tried the Whole Foods thing. That guy bought, busted me, and I was like, all right, I'm going to need to, like, find some new stimulants. So what I ended up doing is I found those uh, Zin nicotine pouches. Yeah, some of you guys are fans. This guy over here is an enthusiast. Like, listen, for the rest of you guys, um, I'm going to level with you. I wasn't a smoker, so don't let that stop you either, okay? <laughs> The Zins are for everybody, and uh, if you weren't trying to use them, they're really simple. Don't be intimidated. I'll tell you what you do. Here's what you do. You take, like, the, uh, the little pouch. You put it up by your gums. You wait till you think you're going to faint, <laughs> and then you leave them in. That's the important part, okay? <laughs> Things start going white. That's what you're looking for, all right? <laughs> and so here's the thing. I was doing the three milligram Zins until one day I went to the store and I noticed they had the six milligram Zins and they were the exact same price. And I'm like, what am I, some kind of sucker? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm a Jewish person. I'll condemn what Israel's doing in Gaza, but I'm not overlooking price discrepancies like this. <laughs> I'm not at that level of rejecting my Hebrew heritage. <laughs> I, am, uh, I am trying to get a little healthier because uh, I'm like, I'm very nervous about the aging process and that's because uh, I'm a bald guy. I didn't go very gracefully. Uh, how old were you when you started going bald, dude? 
20. That's fucking young. What do you do? Did you, like, just take it off and go gracefully? You see, that's what you got to do. You're a real man. You got broad shoulders. You did it right. Congratulations. <laughs> I wish I did what he did. That's the only thing you can do. If you're out there, kids watching this, just shave it off and move on with your life. That's what I should have done. That's not what I did. I started going bald at age 24, and then from 24 to age 30, I was rocking a comb over, but I thought it looked good. I... <laughs> I really did. I left my house every day. I thought women were going to look at me and just be like, you've got so much hair in the middle. <laughs> I thought I'd be talking to women about conditioner and stuff. That's honestly <laughs> what I thought. And then uh, here was the moment I realized I was going to have to shave my head. This is a real story. Is uh, I was about to have sex with this lady. I started getting undressed, and she asked me to put my hat back on. <laughs> <laughs> which I was like, hey, as long as I don't have to wear a condom. <laughs> I'll wear one hat and you can pick it. <laughs> now turn around, I didn't want to look you either. <laughs> So uh, I've started going to the gym. People are telling me that like, this is going to be good for your anxiety. And uh, I kind of feel like the gym probably was good for anxiety before the women there started dressing like they were putting strip clubs out of business. <laughs> <laughs> and while we're on the topic, I also got like a gripe with the way that the women dress at strip clubs, which is, uh, can we get rid of the high heels? Because I feel like if I'm spending money here, I'd like to feel tall. That's what I would like. <laughs> Like, I'd actually prefer if they put the women in a ditch. I feel like that would be better. <laughs> like, if I could just throw dollars down and feel like a real boy, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like that would be better. <laughs> <laughs> but then I go to the gym, and it's way crazier. Like, at least at the strip club, they're wearing thongs. You go to the gym, they got, like, these pants that are, like, going into their buttholes, you know? Or, like... <laughs> Or like I've noticed these women, they're wearing like these bike shorts. Have you guys seen that? There's nothing sluggier than the bike shorts and they're not even getting on bikes. It makes no fucking sense, okay? <laughs> like I wear bike shorts when I'm on a bike because those little tight booty shorts, they're actually less gay than feeling like you were raped by your bike seat. <laughs> <laughs> like I bought this road bike over the pandemic and when the guy sold it to me, he actually sold it to me with these uh, like padded bike shorts and some lube. <laughs> <laughs> And the guy's like, here, you're going to need this. And I was like, this seems like too much. But here's the thing. The guy wasn't lying because uh, out of my area, we got a lot of puddles. You'd be out on the bike, and it's got, like, this firm seat, and you're riding on the bike, and you hit these puddles, and the seat just... <laughs> and so here's the thing. You don't want to be out on the road when you hit a puddle at the wrong angle and you just cum your pants. That's not good. <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't want to be 30 miles from your house realizing you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> you look up, you realize you're in a school zone. <laughs> now you're pedaling really fast so you don't get arrested. You don't want that. That's not good. <laughs> so that's why I wear the bike shorts. That's utility, right? But then I go to the gym and I see these women and not only are they not on bicycles, I've noticed that the shorts that they're wearing has thinner material than the shorts that I'm wearing. And then here's the part that makes me so anxious. I've noticed that when they squat and they start getting the blood flowing, you can actually see their vaginas. And not only can you see them, I notice that they pulsate <laughs> where they're talking to you in Morse code. That's what they're doing. <laughs> And if you don't speak vagina, they're telling you to stare at them. That's what they're doing. <laughs> they're just going, stare at me. And I'm like, are you sure? I'm just trying to work out. And it's like, gaze upon my form. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to be on TikTok, right? <laughs> you guys have all seen this video of a guy who's being a creep at the gym, but they never show you the talking vagina angle, right? <laughs> They just show you the guy when he's locked in, and what, am I not going to listen to a talking vagina? That's ridiculous. <laughs> if 
you had a talking vagina teach me statistics in high school, I'd be a mathematician right now, all right? <laughs> Let me tell you, I wouldn't be doing comedy in a garage, I tell you that. <laughs> Like, I get so locked in. It's at a point now, if you murdered one of these women at my gym and they didn't have their teeth, I could ID a body by the vagina. <laughs> and now, I don't know where that would be helpful where I wasn't also, like, the prime suspect. <laughs> but I am saying, if I heard about an incident on the news, I could walk into that crime lab, lift up a labia with a pencil, and be like, yep, that's Susie. That is... You see the ridges in those meat flaps? <laughs> it's like carbon dating a tree. <laughs> now give me the room. I've got more research to do. <laughs> uh, I had a weird experience, and uh, this happened recently. For the first time in my life, I had an experience where I had to, uh, I actually, I had to call the cops, and uh, we're libertarians. Relax, I wasn't fucking snitching, okay? <laughs> I had an actual emergency, and the uh, cops, they hung up on me and didn't show up. <laughs> I am 0 for 1 on calling the cops, okay? <laughs> and uh, I've been telling this. Apparently, this happens all the time. Like, I'm convinced that this happens so regularly that we could even look at the call logs from 9-11, and there were probably calls from the airport where people were like, yeah, there's like a bunch of Muslim dudes standing in a huddle. <laughs> They're just going, one, two, three, towers. La, 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 la. <laughs> and the cops are like, yeah, we're not taking that one. That's all right. <laughs> so here's what happened. I left this concert, and I went to the train station. And when I went to, like, the ticket machine, this dude comes off off the ground. And right when he gets to his feet, he collapses under his own weight. And I go to grab him. And the mistake I made when I went to grab him is that you can make a decision not to help someone. That's an easy decision. But once you start helping someone, you're kind of pot committed, right? Like, I can't now just drop the guy in the ground. Now I'm doing it, right? <laughs> and the guy starts coming into focus, and he's bleeding, like, a lot, okay? And I'm, like, a bit of a germaphobe. When I say he's bleeding, he's, like, bleeding where you're not supposed to be. Like, Ebola bleeding, okay? <laughs> like, this guy's bleeding, like, from his eyeballs, okay? And now, listen, you're not allowed to say what I'm about to say. Like, I know that you're not allowed to say this, but the fact that this was a Mexican guy that didn't speak English... It makes it worse. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I don't want border blood on me. I'm being honest, okay? <laughs> and by the way, I'm not even saying that's the worst blood. It isn't, okay? We went downtown Denver. One of those homeless guys, that's way worse if we were going to rank it, right? <laughs> but if you had, like, some hot chick, like, who had a concussion, you can get that blood in my mouth. I don't care about that blood. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how you get married. <laughs> You're like, that tasted pretty good. What's up? <laughs> so I help this guy to his feet, and he tries taking off, and he takes two steps and just goes head first into the train tracks. And now he's lucky. He's wearing, like, this big, thick jacket, so I'm able to pull him back by his collar. He takes two steps, and he instantly falls over the railing where two stories off, nearly falls into the street. I pull him back again, like bowling if you have the bumpers up. He's right back into the tracks, pull him back. Then we get to the staircase. He collapses. He starts, like, bleeding even more. And I'm like, I have to call the cops. And so I'm holding the guy because I'm trying to keep him from getting his blood on me. I got my phone in this hand. And then I realize I have an even bigger problem because on the other side of the train tracks, there's a bunch of people looking at me. And to them, it looks like a white nationalist just beat up a Mexican <laughs> and called the cops on the guy. That's what this looks like. It actually looks like I'm holding a fish. That's basically what this looks like. It's like, hey, I caught a good one. Someone get a picture. I feel like this would be good for my Tinder profile. Who? Anyone got a scale? <laughs> And so I'm talking to the cops, and they're asking me all the wrong questions. They're like, sir, why did you hit this Mexican? I'm like, I didn't hit the Mexican. They're like, did you coyote this guy over the border, and then he wouldn't pay, and you took off his eyelids? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Don't pin this on me. I'm trying to help, okay? I didn't invite the guy in. I want to make that clear. Like, if he was on the wall, I'd be the first to poke him over with a stick, but... <laughs> He 
he's here and he needs help. Okay. You got to send someone. They go, fine. We're sending someone. I go, great. Do you mind staying on the line? And that's when they hung up on me. (laughs) And now I'm just holding a bloody Mexican against his will. Okay. (laughs) I'm just standing at a train station, holding a guy who wants to wiggle free. And I'm like, I I basically let him go. He, he's like instantly is about to fall. I basically carry him down the stairs. He walks off and now I'm just stuck alone with my thoughts. And, uh, I didn't say this before, but at the concert I went to, took a lot of mushrooms. <laughs> and so now I'm like, it's like quiet. I was just yelling emergency, and so I'm having crazy thoughts. And uh, my biggest takeaway was I have to start carrying a gun. That was my biggest takeaway. <laughs> because I just learned we're alone in this world, and uh, you can't rely on other people to put down a Mexican. <laughs> Also, I did take enough mushrooms that that might not have even been a Mexican. (laughs) Was he even there there is a great question. And let's end it on that. Thank you so much, everybody. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Oh, this one looks nice. Hi, is this Richard? Great. Why have you on the list of the nicest porches in Colorado? And uh, firstly, I'd like... Yeah, I'm calling about the porch tour. What do you mean last time Rob was out there in the morning caressing the porch poles? I've I've heard that story before. Yeah, I heard that's been going around in the area. There's a a pretty good homeless problem in in Denver, so that, you know, you might want to look into that. I don't... It was a bald guy with a thousand yard stare. It still smells like bleach. Well, I mean, you can get that scent out of the poles. Yeah, you just have to use more bleach. It sounds like this is more of a you problem than than us. I mean, we're just out here trying to spread some laughs to the people. I know bleach is a terrible fucking smell, man. Let's re- let's move past that. Like I said, I can give you the number to rectify this bleach problem. He wasn't jacking off. No, he doesn't ever finish when he rubs it on the poles. That's it's like an edging thing. He gets there throughout Throughout the night, he eventually will finish, yes, and that's where you get the scent of bleach. But like I said, you can get rid of that, and I can give you the number. You just gotta work with me here. Alright, you don't want the number, that's fine, man. Yeah, so on the 15th, is that, is it available? Alright, good, we'll pencil you in.